look at the time zone map, right? Now, I know a lot of uh, candidates. Can I just request that everybody mute the microphones, please, because we're having some feedback sound. A lot of candidates, as soon as they see this uh, map, they stop panicking. But I'm here to tell you now, keep calm and know the time zone map is included to actually assist you, right? Now, when we look at this time zone map, everything you need to complete your time zone calculations is included on this map, right? I want you to, that number one day, let's look right at the top of the map. Do you see this time zone bar, right? I call it the time zone ruler. And in fact, this is the exact map that has been used in all the question papers for tourism. So you can expect to see the same map on Monday as well. Right, so on this time zone map, you at the top, you will notice all the different time zones now. Right in the center, you will notice the zero time zone, which we, in tourism, we refer to as the universal time coordinate. You see people in geography, and another name for this universal time coordinate is also known as the Greenwich Meridian. Why Greenwich? Because it runs through a little town just outside of London called Greenwich, right? And that is where they first had these observatories where they start plotting maps and um, working with lines of longitude and latitude. And hence, all time zones in the rest of the world is calculated relative to the Greenwich Meridian. Or in two, as I mentioned, in tourism, we like to call that Greenwich Meridian, Meridian the universal time coordinate. Okay, so that is indicated here on the map. Know, know where that is located. The other important thing that you need to know is the equator. And uh, basically, we need to know the equator um, creates the two hemispheres, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Then also the, another important uh, meridian here is this international date line. Now, I want to ask you, if you look at this map right now, you see two international date lines, right? But in fact, this is the same line. Remember, we are told the Earth is round. So if we put this map on a flat surface, you actually see the same line. This is the cutting line here, if you cut it through here. That line on this side is exactly the same line on this side here. And that's an known as the international date line. So for tourism, you need to know if you cross this line, you either gain a day or you lose a day. So let's have a look, let's continue. And hopefully my uh, slides will move on, right? I just need to make sure here, uh, there's this little toolbar that is, in my sight, in my line of sight every time I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get rid of it. I don't know how to minimize it, but anyway, let's uh, try the best. Okay. So uh, we are going to be looking at how to calculate time zone difference using the time zone map. Right. So in the first example, we are going to look at New York and South Africa. Now, now New York is located on the minus five time zone line, right? So New York is minus five. And you can notice here what I did here on my time zone rule right here at the top. I've placed a little blue marker on minus five because I want to now determine the time zone difference between New York and South Africa. And if you look at South Africa, you will notice we are on the plus two time zone line. So if you follow this time zone line right up, you can place your other marker on plus two. So you have your two, two markers here on this time zone rule here at, right at the top. So if you want to calculate the time zone difference between these two cities, all you have to do is to calculate or to count the time zones in between, right? So you start from minus five, you will count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you will know that there is seven hours time zone difference between New York and South Africa, right? Let's see if we can get another example. In this case, we're going to try and calculate the time zone difference between South Africa and Perth, 
in Australia. So the very, very first thing you do is you locate the two cities that you're working with. In this case, let's say we're working with Johannesburg and Perth, right? So you locate Johannesburg, you move up on this time zone line to the time zone ruler here at the, bottom, at the top, and you place your marker on plus two. You can um, use this your pen and just make a cross on the plus two. Then you come over to Perth, you locate the city of Perth, you will see here it's on plus eight, move up on the time zone line and place your marker there. Now simply count the different, the amount of time zones in between the two cities, right? So you start with plus two and you will count one, two, three, four, five, six. So which means that there is six hours time zone difference between Johannesburg and Perth. Let's move on. Right. So um, I'm really happy that this um, slide has now moved on to the next slide. Let me just have a drink of water. Right. Let's see the two types of time zone calculations that you will can expect in this um, exam paper. The first one is what I call the direct calculations. Now this is um, an example of a direct calculation is when they ask you what time is it in Perth when it's nine o'clock in the morning in Durban, right? So if you send a WhatsApp to your friend in Perth right now at nine o'clock or 20 past nine, what time is it in Perth when he reads that WhatsApp? Because a WhatsApp is instant, right? So it's a direct calculation. What time is it in Perth when it's nine o'clock in Durban? The second type of calculation that you can expect to see is the type of time zone calculation where there's an, another variable included and that variable, variable is flying time. An example of a time zone calculation using flying time would be the following. A businessman lands in Cape Town after a 15 hour flight from London. It is one o'clock on Monday in Cape Town when he, arrive, when he arrives. What time and date did this flight leave Heathrow International Airport in London? So those are the type of calculations you can expect. Now, YouTube can be your friend. And I want you to, after this presentation, if you want, if you're still struggling with time zone calculations, I've got some time zone calculations, examples and videos on YouTube. And some of my colleagues have also uploaded some of my colleagues from the other provinces. So there's numerous time zone calculations and explanations there. So all you have to do is go to YouTube after this presentation, sometime during this weekend, type into the search bar time zone calculations, and you should be able to uh, get enough examples so that you can confidently go into the exam room on Monday. But let's have a look at um, doing a diary calculation. Let me just write. Um, Direct cal time calculation, let's, let's use this example. What time is it in Perth when it's nine o'clock in Durban? I think that was the, the, the one that we ref refer to in the example right now. So the very, very first thing you need to do is locate the two cities that you are working with, right? And um, the first city is Durban. And obviously Durban is in South Africa. And in South Africa, we use the plus two time zone. So you locate your city, you move up to the time zone ruler here at the top and you place your marker on plus two. Make a little cross there with your pen on, on your time zone map, right? The next city you need to locate is Perth and you know Perth is located in Australia. Locate the city, move up on the time zone map to the time zone rule here at the top and place your marker. Now you need to calculate the time zone difference between those two cities, right? So you count, you simply count from plus two to plus eight. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So you now know that there is a six hour time zone difference between Durban or South Africa in this case and Perth, right? So this is six hours time zone difference. You also know at the time in Durban has been given to you and you need to calculate the time in Perth. So you move from the known, what is known to the unknown. And in this case, you will move to the right. Now, this is where a lot of learners struggle. Once again, if you look at this time zone ruler here at the top, 
and and go to the to the Greenwich Meridian or the Universal Time coordinate. You will see if you move to the right, you have to add hours. As you move to the right, you add more hours. Plus one, plus two, plus three. Right. So the rule of thumb is if you move to the right on the map, you have to add hours. If you move to the left on the map, the rule of thumb says you must subtract hours. So in this case, candidates, we are moving from Durban in South Africa to Perth. So we're moving to the right. So we have to, the rule says we have to add hours. So how many hours do we have to add? We have to add six hours because we've already, we've already determined that there's a six hour time zone difference between Durban and Perth, right? So all we do now is we add the six hours to the nine o'clock and then we get our, we, we get our answer. Right, there we see, this is basically the, the flow of your thought when you, when you complete this uh, calculation. Right, Durban is on plus two, we've allocated that. Nine o'clock was the given time. We've determined that Perth is on plus eight time zone and that is the question we have to answer, right? We've also determined the time zone difference between Durban and Perth is six hours. Therefore, we take the nine o'clock, the known, plus the six hours and we get to three o'clock the afternoon. So the answer would be it is three o'clock in Perth. Now, please note, this is the way you have to write your answer. Please, in tourism, because in, in the tour, in field of tourism, we work with uh, tourists from all over the world and they have an international standard of how to write time. And this is the, the way we write time internationally. We don't say, you don't use the 15H and the double, double zero for 1500 hours. We also don't say 3 p.m. because these are all English ways of expressing time. We use the international time and this, this is the way you do it. The one in green would be the correct way to express three o'clock. Please take note of that. Let's see if my slideshow is going to play along to move to the next one. Not playing with my keyboard. Let's see. I I found out I can move just using the, the roller on my mouse. So that, that might be the new way of moving. Let's continue, candidates. Right. Daylight savings time is another thing that uh, that candidates might be be um, presented with in the question paper. Like 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 we always say, we don't know what the question paper holds, but make sure you know what daylight savings time is all about. Now, daylight savings time allows countries to take advantage of the early rising of the sun during summer. Now, sometimes you can see on this cartoon here, this little cartoon character is trying to move the clock one hour into two o'clock. And you can see that the time on that clock should be one o'clock, but he moves it to two o'clock. Now, this is what countries do when they um, apply daylight savings time. The country has decided to turn the clock one hour ahead at a predetermined date. Now, later during that year, normally during winter, they return to the correct time. Can I just once again request that the producers just mute everybody else because we, we're getting some feedback sounds. I think there's some people's mics unmuted. Right, now let's have a look at how daylight savings time impact um, our tourism calculations. Let's use Canada as an example. Right? Now, if we look at Canada, can the producer please uh, mute everybody else's mic? If we look at Canada, you will notice that Canada is on minus seven time zone, right? So like we always do, we've, we place our marker on the time zone ruler on the top and we make a little cross there. In my case, I put a blue dot there, right? So normally, under normal circumstances, Canada would be on minus seven. But as soon as Canada now start practicing daylight savings, Canada changed their time to one hour ahead. So they effectively assume the neighboring minus six time zone, right? So for all calculation purposes, once Canada is in daylight savings time mode, you will use minus six for Canada and not minus seven, right? Let's, let's look at another example. Let's look at the UK, the United Kingdom. They are normally situated on the 
right on the Greenwich time meridian, right? And normally this is also referred to as London time, okay? So when the United Kingdom practiced daylight savings time or they changed their time to one hour ahead, then they effectively assume the neighboring plus one time zone, right? So for all your calculation purposes, the time zone is no longer calculated from the universal time coordinate, but you will calculate them from plus one. But that is only if the examiner in the question paper specifically mentions to you that daylight savings time is being used. If they don't mention that, you don't use this.